Today on Lyrics to Go, I say thank you. Welcome to Lyrics to Go. I'm Daniel Mate. It is Thanksgiving in the United States of A, which is where I am at the moment. And this is, of course, where Thanksgiving is the biggest deal. In Canada, where I'm from, we have Thanksgiving in early October. And, you know, some people celebrate it, but it's certainly not a holiday that the entire country shuts down for. Hello, everyone. Today, across the country, Canadians will celebrate Thanksgiving. It's a time to celebrate the harvest season. And of course, gratitude is not something that is limited just to Thanksgiving. There are a lot of thank you songs that you can listen to year round. And today seems like a very good day to look at some of them. So I'm going to be taking a look at five lyrics, all with thank you or thanks in the title. Wrong! Actually, on second thought, I'm just going to do four for the sake of time. I'll take the fifth one, which is Thank You For Being A Friend by Andrew Gold, also known as... The Golden Girls theme song. Put that in a bonus mini episode for my Patreon subscribers. If you want to become one of them, head on over to patreon.com slash lyrics to go. And before I go any further, I want to say thank you to everyone who's watched Lyrics to Go since I launched it back in March of this year. It's been really an amazing eight months for me. I've really enjoyed um, exploring lyrics with you here on this channel. I, I look forward to doing a whole lot more in the months and years to come. So thanks so much. And a big a special thank you to my Patreon subscribers. Now, I didn't expect to be talking about this song. Um, I don't know that I'd ever listened to it up close. I don't even think I knew it was by John Denver. I had only heard like a technofied hockey arena version from the 1990s. But it turns out it is by John Denver. He of Take Me Home Country Roads and a bunch of other kind of down home nostalgic uh, songs. But this song is actually really terrific. And what makes it work is John Denver's sticking to this particular rhyme scheme, which is three rhyming lines in a row, and then the hook, thank God I'm a country boy. Well, life on the farm is kind of laid back, ain't much an old country boy like me can't hack. It's early to rise, early in a sack, thank God I'm a country boy. And then the next little stanza has the same structure, a simple kind of life never did me no harm, a raising me a family and working on the farm. My days are all filled with an easy country charm. Thank God I'm a country boy. And you hear how much fun that rhythm is. It's very, very rhythmic and it sticks to it. It's got that hoedown cadence to it. And structurally, the chorus actually is almost identical to the verses. See if you can tell what's different aside from the melody. Well, I got me a fine wife, I got me old fiddle. When the sun's coming up, I got cakes on a griddle. Life ain't nothing but a funny, funny riddle. Thank God I'm a country boy. When the only thing that's different is he adds a syllable. He makes it even more wordy with words like fiddle, griddle, and riddle. Those are all two syllable words. So three of those in a row is extra fun. And ending with that kind of motto, life ain't nothing but a funny, funny riddle, kind of down home country philosophy there. It's iconic and it really stands out. In the second verse, he brings music into his country boy lifestyle. When the work's all done and the sun's setting low, I pull out my fiddle and I rosin up the bow. Rosin is the, uh, it's that like sap that they put on the bow to keep it nice and lubricated, I think. I'm not a fiddle player, but I think that's what rosin is. Uh, the kids are asleep, so I keep it kind of low. <laughs> I love that. The next line kind of threw me for a loop until I looked it up. I'd play Sally Gooden all day if I could, but the Lord and my wife wouldn't take it very good. Who's Sally Gooden? And what does he mean playing her? Actually, it turns out Sally Gooden is a traditional fiddle tune, so the lyric makes perfect sense. And I really like the way he concludes those three rhymes there. So I fiddle when I can, and I work when I should. Thank God I'm a country boy. When you've got three rhymes in a row, you really want to land the last one with a satisfying turn of phrase, and that certainly qualifies. In the third verse, he contrasts his down-home simple life with the lifestyles of the rich and famous, or at least the rich and urban. Well, I wouldn't play my life for diamonds or jewels. I never was one of them money-hungry fools. Rather have a fiddle and a folly and tools. Thank God I'm a country boy. Yeah, city folk driving in a black limousine. A lot of sad people think I'm not somebody and the last verse is all about lineage. It's about where all of this pride came from in the first place. 
Well, my fiddle was my daddy's till the day he died, and he took me by the hand, held me close to his side, said, live a good life, play my fiddle with pride, and thank God you're a country boy. So there we hear where this attitude of gratitude was inculcated in him by his daddy. So I love it. And I love discovering that what I thought was a corny, campy, you know, like techno song is actually a a very fun and appealing song of thanks and gratitude for a simpler life than most of us will ever live. Right now, this Alanis song really surprised me, not because I hadn't heard it. I totally had back in the late 90s when it came out, but I never paid it much mind. I thought it was kind of silly, actually. I was never the biggest Alanis fan. I mean, you couldn't deny that her songs were incredibly catchy. I mean, almost too catchy. They were earworms. They would stick in your head for days. And her voice was so, you know, intense and like right in your face, right in the mix. I remembered her, of course, as a Canadian teen pop star and i found her jagged little pill stuff maybe a little affected a little overproduced and this follow-up to it i just thought it was kind of awkward at the time but i also think i couldn't really relate to it and i was a little too cool for school looking at it now a little later in life Uh, I see a lot of beauty and wisdom in it. And the fact that the lyrics feel kind of awkward, that there isn't really any rhyming, and that sometimes even the syllables seem to have the wrong emphasis, uh, like the scan is kind of off, it adds to the touchingness of it. It's very human. It's like she wrote this out uh, on a napkin, on an airplane coming back from India. I don't know if this is true, but that's what it feels like. And then she just sat down at the guitar or the piano and she just said it and she didn't try to make it slick or sophisticated. It's exuberant. It's ecstatic. It really does sound like someone in the aftermath of some kind of awakening. And at this point in my life, I can give props to that and be moved by that. And you can't say you've ever heard lyrics like this ever before anywhere else. How about getting off of these antibiotics? How about getting off of these antibiotics? How about stopping eating when I am full of? So, first of all, the construction of how about, how about, how about is a very interesting uh, way of setting up a lyric. It's like proposing things. It's like, hey, crazy idea, but how about stopping eating when I'm full up? Um, How about them transparent dangling carrots and that ever elusive kudo? Seems to me she's talking about divesting from the ego, you know, giving up, chasing, you know, the dangling carrot, those um, dreams that we think we want, but that will never satisfy us and that never really fully come to fruition. That ever elusive kudo, I can relate to this, wanting to be acknowledged and seen by other people. Um, and it never fully satisfies. I'll come back to the chorus, but let's just look at the other verses quickly. Uh, The second one is more about relationship, it seems. How about me not blaming you for everything? How about me enjoying the moment for once? How about how good it feels to finally forgive you? How about grieving it all one at a time? These kind of marks of maturity when we can get wise enough and solid enough in ourselves to forgive people that we've been holding grudges against when it really seems like they deserve it, um, to actually enjoy the moment for once, to take responsibility, to not blame others for everything, and to actually have the courage to grieve what there is to grieve, to let loss move through us and to really return to the present moment, which is everything she's singing about here points to that, like being here right now. Looking at the chorus, it is a beautifully anthemic and very mature list of 
things to be thankful for and, and surprising things to be thankful for. She thanks India. Well, that makes sense. It seems like she had some kind of spiritual awakening there. She's not the first person to thank that part of the world. But thank you, terror. That's a very interesting target of gratefulness. Um, we often think of terror and the next word, disillusionment, as things to avoid. Who wants to be terrified? Who wants to be disillusioned? But she's seeing the purifying, um, cleansing qualities of these adverse experiences, right? We get scared, we move through our fear, we come out stronger. We get disillusioned, we come out clearer, fewer illusions, right? Who doesn't want that? And I really like the next two. Thank you, frailty. That's like, thank you for my limitations. You know, thank you being human and not being able to be Superman or Superwoman. Uh, thank you for having limits and thank you consequence. That's great. I love that word, generally speaking. And people often misuse the word karma to mean what I think Alanis is referring to here, which is just cause and effect. And consequence, it's not punishment. Uh, it's not personal. It just is the way it is. It's like, thank you, gravity. And then she thanks silence, which is very moving actually, because the song is very much not silent, especially this chorus. She's almost yelling these lines ecstatically. And there's a kind of immense gratitude to spaciousness and nothingness. In fact, she mentions nothingness in the last chorus where she varies up the lyrics a bit. Uh, thank you, India. Thank you, Providence. Thank you, disillusionment. Thank you, nothingness. Thank you, clarity. And thank you, silence. So again, as a snotty, snobby, know-it-all in my 20s. Uh, I was not having this. I was like, what's she on about? Come on, this is not a pop song. Uh, but listening to it now, I can really relate. So just want to say thank you, Alanis. Thanks for all the dancing. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. All right, this next song by Leonard Cohen is one I hadn't heard before. In fact, I didn't even know this album existed. This is the title track off Thanks for the Dance, which is, it turns out, his final album. I thought his final album was You Want It Darker, the record that came out the same week or maybe the same month that he died. But actually, this one was put together afterwards from songs recorded and written right around the same time. This is a beautiful schlubby thank you. And what I mean by that is something that Stephen Jenkinson, who like Leonard Cohen and me is Canadian, said about St. Lenny when I interviewed him, which is that Leonard Cohen is the king of the, like the nebbishy sexiness. You know, he is kind of a loser, but a very, very lovable one, an irresistible one. And he is attracted to and extols the virtues of imperfection. It's not slick. It's not refined. It's very poetic, but it's very um, human. And this song reflects that. Thanks for the dance. I'm sorry you're tired. The evening has hardly begun. Thanks for the dance. Try to look inspired. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Well, how charming is that? You know, the, the steps of the dance enter the lyric. And actually, Leonard Cohen has a number of songs about dancing, uh, Dance Me to the Edge of Love, right? And then also Take This Waltz. Uh, this one is slower. It sounds elderly and you get the sense of a man near the end of his life thanking a lover or maybe thanking life itself uh, for a very um, imperfectly executed but still very beautiful dance. Thanks. For the dance, I'm sorry you're tired. The evening has hardly begun. Thanks for the dance. Try to look inspired. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. And so his partner is already fatigued you know the evening has hardly begun but he says try to look inspired you know let's put on a good show there's a rose in your hair your shoulders are bare you've been wearing this costume forever uh it's so rich these lyrics uh the use of the word costume acknowledges the artifice of it but he actually 
isn't dismissing it for that. He says, so turn up the music, pour out the wine, stop at the surface. The surface is fine. We don't need to go any deeper. So on the one hand, acknowledging, hey, you know, we're just going through the motions here. But in the next breath, let's keep going through the motions. Maybe just going through the motions is the point. So such a rich, complex, unsentimental, but deeply felt expression of what it is to be in a dance with somebody or with life. Uh, terrific lines here. It was fine. It was fast. We were first, we were last in line at the temple of pleasure. Notice how fine and line create a little implicit rhyme there. Not to mention, of course, thanks for the dance. And then this is my favorite section in the entire song. But the green was so green and the blue was so blue. I was so I and you were so you. The crisis was light as a feather. A lesser songwriter, I think, would stretch for similes or metaphors. The green was like emerald. The blue was like the sky or the ocean. But no, the green was so green in its greenness. The blue was the bluest of blueness. I was so I and you were so you. We were the epitome of ourselves. Our love was so much itself. And then the crisis was light as a feather. Um, very surprising turn of phrase. You don't think of crisis as light. But again, when you have uh, an old soul like this who's really lived, the ability to see the lightness in those heavy moments, he's really opening a door to, I think, a very wise, um, grizzled, humor-filled, heart-filled perspective on life that you're just not going to hear from anyone else writing in the pop idiom. All right, and then the lyric concludes with just a beautiful little half stanza where he keeps juxtaposing opposites. And actually, look at what he does here. It's, it's profound. Thanks for the dance. It was hell. It was swell. It was fun. You see how he takes hell and swell, which rhyme, but also they're complete opposites in terms of meaning. So on the one hand, the words mean the opposite thing. On the other hand, they rhyme with each other. They are the mirror images of each other, which again, that's the work of a poet to show us how seemingly opposing things really are very much related. And in life, in a relationship, the hellness of it and the swellness of it are part and parcel of the same thing. They're just flip sides of the same coin. And that is all contained in those six little words. It was hell, it was swell, and then it was fun. Thanks for all the dances. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. And you know, the steps just keep going on and on in an endless circle. So I think we can all say to Leonard Cohen, the feeling is mutual. Thank you for all the dances. Thank you. All right, last but not least is a song that I never expected to put on this list until I really gave it a listen. And I think this song is really terrific. The title, Thank You Next, makes me think it's just going to be sarcastic. Like, yeah, thanks a lot. On to the next boyfriend, lover, partner, whatever. But actually, it's not sarcastic. It's completely sincere. There is a slight um, knowing edge to it, but it doesn't undercut the genuine gratitude that she's singing about for all of her past relationships. So this is a pop song with a verse, a pre-chorus, and a chorus, and it's very well structured. Each one does what it should. Each one does something different. So the verses, which have a kind of triplety cadence, which is very popular in hip-hop music these days, thought I'd end up with Sean but he wasn't a match. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Speaking of <laughs> thanks for the dance. Uh, and in these verses, she's telling us a story of how she got to where she is now through a series of relationships. And the first verse focuses on those past boyfriends. Thought I'd end up with Sean, but he wasn't a match. Wrote some songs about Ricky. Now I listen and laugh. Now I listen and laugh. That's really concise and uh, and clever. You know, if you look back at old diary entries from when you were in middle school about the boy or girl you had a crush on and just what a big deal it seemed like. Now you can look back with some affection. 
So that's very relatable. Even almost got married. And for Pete, I'm so thankful. Wish I could say thank you to Malcolm because he was an angel. So there is no um, shade being thrown at these men here. Even Sean, who wasn't a Matt, she doesn't blame him. It's more self-reflective. She's like, oh, wow, I was so sure of myself at each of these moments. And it turns out that wasn't it. And there was some lesson in that. And that's really what the song is about. Kind of like the Alanis song, being thankful for the lessons that come from things not going your way. And um, I really appreciate that. And then the pre-chorus does what any good pre-chorus should do. It gets us excited for the chorus. There's a sense of build. I call it an on-ramp to the superhighway that the chorus is. And this is where she's listing the lessons that all of these experiences have taught her. One taught me love. One taught me patience. One taught me pain. Patience, pain. That's a nice assonance there. Now I'm so amazing. Uh, say I've loved and I've lost, but that's not what I see. So look what I got. Look what you taught me. And for that, I say, and then we go into the chorus. But just before we look at that, um, I like that line. I've loved and I've lost, but that's not what I see. I'm not even seeing it as loss. I had experiences. And what I actually see is me gaining something, me becoming a more amazing, more together, more grounded individual through the experience of having loved these people and learned what I learned. And the chorus is so simple, so elegant as a pop hook. And I know that there's a clean version that um, is probably what's played on the radio, but I think the, the full version is hilarious. Thank you, next. Thank you, next. Thank you, next. I'm so fucking grateful for my ex. And that's the one part where you could think maybe there's a little bit of an edge to it, but it doesn't feel that way. It, it really feels like a genuine expression of gratitude. I don't feel like she's kicking any of these men to the curb. Um, it is very embracing, but she's also leaving them behind. And she has to have left them behind for her to have learned love, patience, and pain, and all these things. The second verse, the story continues with what's the aftermath? You know, what's the, the upshot of all this? What are the benefits? Spend more time with my friends. I ain't worried about nothing. Plus, I met someone else. We're having better discussions. Okay, great. She's in a new relationship. It's more intellectually stimulating. But hold up. I know they say I move on too fast, but this one gonna last because her name is Ari, Ariana, and I'm so good with that. So, of course, she's talking about herself, unless she met a woman named Ari and she's with her, which I guess is possible. But I think the twist is, you know, not only do I have more time for my friends, but I am now in a closer relationship with myself. I, I have better conversations with myself. I'm thinking about better things. I'm enjoying myself more. I feel more like myself. So once again, like the Alanis song, we're talking about growth and a movement towards authenticity by embracing the failure of relationships that weren't meant to be. The first verse was the past. The second verse is the present. This third verse is what she imagines for the future. One day I'll walk down the aisle holding hands with my mama. I'll be thanking my dad because she grew from the drama. That's a very uh, sly little thing there. Um, so I'm going to get married. She doesn't even mention to whom. It doesn't matter. You know, one day I'll get there. and I'll be holding hands with my mama and I'll be thanking my dad who isn't there, I guess. And why am I thanking him? Because she grew from the drama that happened with him. I'm thanking my dad for the lessons my mom learned, which she clearly passed on to me. So this lesson, this attitude extends way into the past and way into the future. It's actually very moving. And then she ends it with kind of a sly little humble braggy kind of joke. Um, only want to do it once real bad. Going to make that shit last. Like, when I get married, that'll be it. I believe when I fall in love, it'll be forever, like Stevie Wonder said. I believe when I fall in love with you, it will be forever. God forbid something happens. At least this song is a smash. <laughs> so, I mean, she called it. This song was a smash from the minute it dropped. It was quite a phenomenon, as I remember it. I wasn't listening to it, but I was aware of it. Uh, but there's more than a joke in that, actually. Um, you know, of course, I want my marriage to last when it happens. I do want to find someone that I can be with forever. But you know what? Even if it doesn't happen, I'm good. I wrote a great song about all this. And, you know, I'll be getting the royalties forever. 
But more to the point, and then the pre-chorus continues, I've got so much love, got so much patience, and I've learned from the pain, I turned out amazing. So that's ultimately what the song is about. You know, thank you for all of these experiences and whatever's next, bring it on. Thank you so bloody much. <laughs> All right, that does it for these five four. thank you songs that I'm particularly thankful for. I'm sure you have your own, so please leave a comment below. What are your favorite thank you songs? What songs get you in the attitude of gratitude mood? Um, and also look for part two, where I will be talking very soon about some thank you songs that are saying something very different than thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You fuck too kind. Hold your applause. This is your song, not mine. I'm losing you and you are all I've got. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. I don't owe you anything, but I give you everything. Watch you pile it up and sing. Thanks, I hate it. Until next time, I'm Daniel Mate saying. I've got lyrics to go, and thankfully, now you do too.